Hey, welcome back, guys, to another Big Ken Talks Reviews. And Vesper is a post-apocalyptic sci-fi thriller directed by Christina Posita and Bruno Samper. And stars Ophelia Chapman as the titular character Vesper, as well as Eddie Marson, Rosie McAllen, Richard Brake, and Melanie Guidos. And the film takes place in a new dystopian Earth where the battle against an ecological crisis has caused man-made viruses to nearly wipe out all life, to include plants, animals, and people. Now, Vesper, one of the few survivors not lucky or rich enough to live in an enclosed city called the Citadel, fights to survive along with her paralyzed father, whom which she communicates with through a drone. Struggling to survive the harsh world, things go from bad to worse very fast, and Vesper is forced to reach out and acquire material to save her father, during which she meets Camellia, who is from a Citadel. With the promise from Camellia, played by Rosie McElwin, to bring Vesper and company to her Citadel in exchange for Vesper's help, Vesper has no choice but to oblige. However, not everything is as it appears, and danger lurks around every corner. Now, to be honest with you guys, Guys, this movie was completely off my radar. I knew nothing about any of the actors or directors for Vesper. And I had only relatively recently caught the trailer for Vesper and I remember being kind of confused. I didn't recognize anyone and I wasn't quite sure what the story was all about. All I knew at that time was that the trailer kind of looked pretty dope and I knew that if I happened to come across the movie, I would give it a watch, but I wasn't actively looking for it. Well guys, I happened to come across Vesper and I have my thoughts. So let's talk about it. The world building in this movie is just absolutely phenomenal. And not only that, but also feels very organic and lived in. Which you just gotta give credit to the cinematography on this one. And I think it was done by, and I apologize in advance for butchering this name, but Felixis Abrakaskis. Holy crap, he did an amazing job creating and designing this dystopian-like world perfectly, integrating CGI and practical effects. I'm just saying you feel the weight and the despair and the hopelessness and just the environment itself and it's just so perfectly built in a real detailed look into this new world we're discovering. I found myself not necessarily wanting to live in this world because I'm saying it's full of desolation and misery but I wanted to explore more of it. I just think there are way more stories to tell like how we got here in the first place or what happens next and I don't know if those stories would really have to revolve around Vesper. I mean they could but I think the world that was built is actually strong enough to stay Stand on its own. And I'm not saying I wouldn't want more of Vesper. I was really intrigued with her character. Chapman does an excellent job showcasing the burdens this 13 year old girl carries on a day to day basis. While watching Vesper, I couldn't help but make the connections with her character to today's millennials and Gen Zers. Because along with her burden, she carries this anger and sadness due to the fact that she has inherited a somewhat dying world. And with that sentiment, I just can't help but think that we're watching a character of real life play out in the film. Whether or not that's the prerogative, I did feel it and I guess it is what it is. The other characters in the film are also very strong, specifically speaking to McEwen's Camellia and Marcin's Jonas. I was quite captivated with both representations and really liked how the film explored both of these characters' relationship with Vesper, particularly with Camellia's relationship with Vesper herself. Honestly, I just think this film is a great character study in general, especially with these three prominent it rolls. And I feel like though the story is relatively simple, it's written well enough to give us a lot, mainly through the dialogue. The only draw I had with the movie is how unapologetic it is with its stance on capitalism. And not that showing the negative aspects of capitalism are bad, but it's literally like the basis or core of the movie. And you do kind of feel that being shoved into your face. But I do get it with a new dark world, it has to happen from something. And so we have capitalism and capitalism equals greed and greed equals evil. So I guess capitalism has to be the big bad for this one. Again, it's really not a problem. It's just very abundantly clear. And I would have rather it been more like an undertone or more insidious in nature if that's the route they wanted to take in order to tell this story. But to each their own, like I said, it's not a deal breaker, very minor, just something that I was consciously thinking about as I was watching this film. 
Listen, guys, I think Vesper is a wonderful coming of age story and honestly feels like nothing I've watched before. The characters are dynamic and powerful, and I think you guys won't be able to help but root for Vesper. I think a lot of us who care about the planet and believe we see where it's going see ourselves in Vesper. So her character becomes very relatable, at least on the surface level, very fast, which locks you into this film. Typically, with a simple story, I wouldn't credit the writing, but the dialogue between the characters felt raw and natural and provided some of the best moments of the film. But even with that being said, absolutely the best part of Vesper is hands down the beautiful world that was built. I'm talking about the perfect blend of CGI and robots and plant life and practical effects. The world you see on screen was just incredibly breathtaking and really does earn or warrant audiences to watch this film in the theater. Vesper is not a movie that was made for the small screen. It was absolutely made to be seen on the largest screen you can find to help engulf you into its environment. And with that, a way too early of a reaction, but I wouldn't be surprised if Vesper is up for some type of Academy Award, probably for best cinematography or effects. However, the only surprise I would have is if it's snubbed. Unfortunately, I don't think this movie is on a lot of folks' radar. It certainly wasn't on mine. However, hopefully through word of mouth, all of that changes because this is definitely one of the must watch movies of 2022. So I guess we'll see. But hey, those are just my thoughts. And as always, I want to know yours. Did you know and are you planning on watching Vesper? What other movie do you think may have missed my radar? Let me know down below. And don't forget to catch these videos over to my left. And I'm going to catch you guys next time where we get to talk about it. Peace.